Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Well, it's March 2nd. We're right in the middle of the Elden Ring zeitgeist. Yeah, I love it. Okay. It reminds me, like, all of my anxieties for open world games are being presented with a big list of things to do. Oh, you know, people yeah. People screaming at every instance to tell me to go do them and remind me of them and let me know where they are and how I can upgrade different aspects of the game I don't care about. And it's just like a cacophony of noises and lights and sounds that scream at me to go toward a direction so I can listen to people talk for 20 minutes in a row. Yeah. And I like it when people just say two to five cryptic sentences and let me go out in the world. No quest log, big world. No idea how big it is. No clue what I'm doing really either. But the game trusts me to figure it out. As soon as I read that there was no quest log and that it was All just in. it was just like kind of similar to the the open world of Breath of the Wild, then I was all in. Do you think as a side effect of not wanting people to talk to you in a bunch of information is spawned out from playing an RPG where we have to write down nearly every line of dialogue? I think that's a, that's part of it, but also I think video games in general like don't trust the player. Talk too much. Yeah. Like a lot. And I was even shocked that like deaths in Death Stranding, they don't talk too much. No. A Kojima game where they don't talk too much. Can you fucking believe it? Yeah, uh, well, rigging all those characters is pretty expensive, Chris, and they had to do holograms for most of them. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's, that, that's also very true. Uh, anyway, I, I, I put down Death Stranding for a while for the obvious zeitgeist. Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Yes. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This is the season where we are covering two video games at once. Well, actually not at once. In succession. Of witches. Of wars. Sweet Coden and Sweet Coden 2. My name is Chris. As always, I'm joined by Eric. Hello. Hey, Hi. Chris. Hey, nice to see you. Thanks. We are also joined by The Real Net. The Real Net, in case you haven't heard, is a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can join this Real Net and get access to it and bonus content at patreon.com slash retro am this episode is brought to you by rigamort thanks rigamort for your patronage and your support we appreciate you thank you support rigamort support rigamort support rigamort it works they victus chris we're also joined by the fake net our post-production ai companion and secret unlockable navigator in bulk slash for sega saturn initializing fake net I dutifully support mech pilot Cress Dawley in order to win the war against Alois Gardona and his army. What the fuck is Bulk Slash? Mecha game. Oh, I like mecha. You walk around big cities in your mecha and then you push a button and turn into an airplane and fly around and shoot shit. Cool. It's an excellent game. Not like best game of all time, but it was recently localized, Chris. If you have a Sega Saturn, I recommend you play it. Well, I don't, but... Bulk uh, Slash by Hudson. Cool. Odessa, the leader of the Liberation Army, the rebel forces... She's dead. She's in the river. She died. She died in the stream. And she has appointed us as her, I don't know, heir apparent, which is weird because she's not consulted any of the other members of the Liberation Army. Yeah, but Tyr has the invisible hand of destiny behind him, and everybody knows that. Yes, and the earring, apparently, yeah. because we are, we are told to take this earring to a man named Matthew. Uh, Seiko? Seika? Se Seika. Seika is what I called? Okay. Seika. 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 Um, <laughs> so we're in the middle of discussing that. We're in the end. It's quiet. It's a good time to capture the quack sound. I, I do want to note that after Odessa died, it's like, it was a fade to black, but it stayed black a very long time. Yeah, like you're longer right. Longer than the other fade to blacks in this game. Mm -hmm. So we're standing in a diamond shape. There's no music, probably because it would have been weird as hell to play Rock Rockland after she died. Yeah. Grimio thinks we should go to Seika, Chris. Mm -hmm. Cleo reminds the player we have to find Matthew there. But to get to Seika, we have to pass through... The Fortress of Quaba. Victor acknowledges that it will be tough, but they have to give it a try. We party up and I have control. Chris, where's the Fortress of Quaba? Well, Eric, it's south. Hmm. It's very far south. It is the fortress that kind of uh, breaks this area up from the, the other area. I think they're two different kind of, let's call them municipalities, provinces. And this fortress wall spans the continent. Is this a Great Wall of China analogy? It sure does look like one, so... I don't know if the time periods there match up, because I'm not an expert or even remotely knowledgeable about Chinese history, but that's around the same time, right? 
probably centuries off. I don't know. Fake net, is it around the same time? It, is, is what around the same time? The, same the actual time? Great Wall of China when these novels were written. What not? The, 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 water novel, margin, the novelization of Silk Odin? Yeah, of course. Oh, the water margin? Oh, okay. Initializing fake net. While China has a long history of border walls, the Great Wall was built during the Ming Dynasty, which lasted from 1368 to 1644. Outlaws of the Marsh was set in 1120, but probably written in the middle of the 14th century. I'm not your math teacher, but those dates line up. Uh, yeah, they were. I'm pretty sure they were. Well, Fignan already told us. Okay. Crisp hears me, but he doesn't listen. Uh, so we're, we're heading to Quaba Fortress. Eric, would you like some Quaba Fortress information before we yeah, get there? Yeah, of course. What's Quaba mean? Um, you fail. Eric, I don't know what Quaba means, but Quaba Fortress was where the decisive battle took place during the Succession War. Since then, a person named Ein Geid has been in charge of Quaba. Quaba remains a, an important wall of protection for Greg Minster. And I have one more fun fact from Blue Moon after we get through the scene. We party out on a rock path surrounded by green grass. Cleo says the fortress of Quaba is commanded by, as Chris said, Ein Geid, an old friend of Master Teo. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know us, but he certainly knows your face. Grimia wonders if we can get away with us, suggesting we should test our luck. What? That's more bravery than I expected from Grimia? Yeah, he's ready to press his luck, press our luck. It's weird. Victor mm thinks we need some fake names. Some fake nets. We'll be in trouble. Fake net, what's your fake name? Initializing fake net. It's Ma Johnson. Totem Pole the third. Piss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. We'll be in trouble if they ask us who we are. Then we all, they start to pick names. Grimio is going to be Roy, R-O-I. Yeah. Cleo will be Maria. Victor insults Cleo for wanting to be Maria. No sells her reaction and then says he'll be what, Chris? He'll be Schl I know you're going to make me do this. I should have practiced. Schlotenheim Reinbach the third. Three. Yes. How's that sound? Everybody spits dots. Then Grimio asks here what his name will be and I hope this fucking game lets me pick. Yeah. It does. <laughs> Indeed. Our three choices are Masamune, uh -huh. Piske, or Schlottenheim Reinbach the fourth. There's a canonical answer here, Eric. Yeah, what's that? Schlottenheim Reinbach the fourth. I don't know if it's canonical, but you should definitely pick it. You bet it. your ass that I picked that. Yeah, I did too. It's ridiculous. Uh, also, it insults Victor. Uh, hopefully somebody in the real net can, can confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that when they made Suikoden 4, they made, just made fucking Schlottenheim Reinbach the first. Suikoden 4, from what you tell me, sounds highly self-referential as a game. It's a, pre it, it's, it, it's a prequel. So. Well, yeah, but like in the way that prequels are always kind of like slightly pathetic about like winking too hard at things in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they fucking put Ted in there, so. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's what's Pisuke? What does that mean? What uh, is that? Fake net? Japanese fake net. Oh, yeah. Fake net and fake net. Fake net. Fake net. Fake net. Fake net. Fake net. She said Pisuke is in a Doraman movie. And we all know what the Masamune is, traditionally. Yeah, please see our, epi our entire episode of Chrono Cross about please the Masamune. Play a JRPG. Yeah, also I, true. Uh, Gl Sephiroth. Cleo and Grimio can't believe this shit. I have control. They always know, so, what, they always, re like, we both picked Schladenheim, I guess. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, I got dots from everyone, just like my idol Victor did. I head forward into the fort. Two soldiers stop me. We party out. Victor uh, slash Schlottenheim 3 says, Me, sir? I'm just a poor jujube vendor with hungry kids waiting at the table. I forgot to look at what jujube is. Fake net, what's a jujube? Initializing fake net. It's a plant that bears fruit and also called red date or Chinese date. Do you think it's real? A jujube? Do you think they admit that it's like no, in-universe fruit? it's gotta be real. I don't know. Have you seen that word in your entire life? No. Okay. Well, Chris believes in jujube. has got a lot of words. Skeptical. Yeah. The soldier responds, not you, the little runt. He looks like a fugitive. Yeah, Tier like... Mictal. Yeah, of course. Ein Geid, wearing a fucking crown and a golden cape, saunters forward. He's got a very long head. Yeah. And a... Uh, I don't think he's got a mustache, but he's got a little goatee on there. He looks kind of menacing. There's some head dimensions here that looks like they were designed in widescreen, then shrank to 4x3 unintentionally. Wow, yeah. He asks, what's the matter? He has an elite haircut. The guard says, Tyr looks like Tyr. Guide then asks Tyr to show his face to see if he's Tyr. Yeah. But Cleo speaks, fearing what will happen if he sees her. M. What? Huh? Well, anyway, in the nick of time, I guess, Grimio gets all up in Tyr's face. Yeah. Saying he's had enough of him. He's always causing trouble and completely useless, too. Now they think you're a fugitive. You're a pain in the neck even when you're doing nothing. Grimio keeps going. Sir, if you find this boy suspicious, I'd be glad to lop his head off. Right here, 
And now, so Chris, whenever there's a dramatic performance like this, you got to think there's some truth in it to make it to sell it, right? So do you think Gremio is like getting out pent up rage and frustration for wiping tears ass for the past ten years, and like it's all coming? Like this is authentic that Gremio can express it unless she yeah, has permission. You might be right about that. Uh, the the Blue Moon comment uh, from before this entire scene where basically Gremio beats Tear McDoll to in order to like make the guards look the other way. Yeah, uh, is from an old Japanese story called Genpei. Jusuki, aka the rise and fall of Minato and Tiara clans. I mean, I feel like throwing off the guards with false conflict isn't necessarily unique to a yeah, certain. Apparently, story. yeah. Apparently, there's a scene in there where where a, a guy beats his kid to, in order to get through, or, or or his pretend kid. But yeah, whatever. Okay. Thanks, Blue Moon. Yep. I guess Blue Moon's uh, going on one on the six week coding wiki. It looks like. Yeah, Blue Moon definitely uh, also editorializes that comment with says, "Of course, you probably don't care." But I care, Blue Moon. Everybody listening to this podcast now cares. Thanks, oh Blue Moon. The soldier is kind of like, hey, wait. But Grimio continues. Don't worry, sir. I can't be thought of as harbor, as harboring a fugitive. You, prepare to die. The guard intervenes and guide speaks. Think about it, Rosh. McDull's son wouldn't be dressed like a beggar. You all, you may pass. These are just his regular clothes, Chris. He saw the emperor in this shit. Yeah. Yeah. As what we, the hell? Yeah. As we pass, Guide stops us and says, Hey, sorry, take good care of your father. I got Hey Sunny. I also got Hey Sunny and cannot read. Perhaps <laughs> I need glasses. Uh, so he, he's he's doing us a solid? He's doing Teo McDowell a solid? Yeah, but... Or is he or is he just saying, Oh, no, take no. care of, your, of Grimio, your father? I, I assume Grimio was his father. I don't think this is like some back to where I respect your father thing. I, I believe that like he thinks that Grimio's father is on one and is about to get his ass beat. Okay. Although I, I, not that you mentioned it, it could be read that way. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. What do you? What do you? What did? You, what was your default there? What do you believe? I thought. I thought that he was. Uh, he, wink, wink, he, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Do we see Guide again, and will we have further context to draw all that conclusion upon? We do see him again. Excellent. But... Do we kill him? Uh, don't answer that question, Chris. Grimio immediately begs forgiveness. Even though we were in danger, I went too far. I'm ready for any kind of punishment. You can even cut off my head. Victor can't believe this shit, telling Grimio that safe passage is all that matters. Tyr has a big heart, and we get a choice of what to do. Mm -hmm. Unforgivable or I understand Grimio. I said unforgivable. Fuck yeah, what happened? Cleo stopped me from killing Grimio. Really? Yeah. You were ready to, I mean, Tyr's out for blood. Yeah. Uh, but uh, she makes me say I understand it. It puts it into a loop. Okay. I, I thought he would, I thought it would play on with it being kind of a joke. But it didn't play that way. He puts it into a loop, huh? What's that sound like? I mean, is it? It's this is not really. I mean, either. I mean, he was never really going to cut off Grimio's head. Are you sure about that? Because yes. we, okay, he, his weapon is a pole. You, you can't. Hey, you, you, can't hit it, you hit it hard enough, man. <laughs> you can't do it. No, I don't think so. I don't pole think weapons. so. I tell Grimio that I understand, and he says, "Young master," in that longing way, and then we party up. Mm-hmm. There's some other guy out here on the other side, Chris. Who is it? It's Chandler, who only has one eye. He does. But that's how I observe oh. Chandler. He's an idle peddler who travels here in search of a profit. He's a capitalist, Eric. Or maybe he's just trying to feed his family. Who fucking knows? He hopes one day to have his own store. I have, yes. He was a Ferengi. So, yeah, yeah. profit. Mm-hmm. Chris, one day, will we help Chandler get his own store? I fucking sure hope so, because why else would he have a portrait? Well, everyone we encounter now have a very specific job title that may be useful at a future castle. Not everyone. Like, some of, some of these are going to be more opaque. And you're going to have to figure out why Does you every to... fucker have a use is what I'm asking. Like, can we use all of these people in battle or just, period? just in period? Like, do they have a function? Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and let's keep our eyes out for a, in, any useless characters. I'm going to say, I, I want the current, I want fun guy. I want Pashu. I want somebody to have around to make me laugh. And uh, Romeo does not count. No, <laughs> I think that's more of a soy code and two thing, but, uh, there's, th- th- there's a few good ones here. Okay. World map, music, tiny characters in a huge world plays. It's going to be great. I fought some new monsters in this world I map, I did Chris. fight some new monsters, but did you notice what is new about you? You, Tyr McDoll. Uh, I'm wearing an earring. Well, no, Trying he to be cool. has earring is maybe one of them. Uh, I put it in. It's like Alice's wedding dress. Put that shit on. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay, cool. I mean, in my head, not for oh, real. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, since someone close to him has died, yeah. uh, Tyr McDoll now has magic of the Soul Eater. He can use magic. It absorbs souls. Kill all your friends. We so, should have killed Gremio. It's the fucking Soul Eater. So, like, as I, I alluded to this in the last episode, but Tyr doesn't unlock spells just by leveling up like most characters. He kills his friends? He 
gets he gets spells when certain story events happen. Dude, it would be a fantastic RPG mechanic. Do you want their physical abilities and help in battle, or do you want to kill them and absorb their power to use them remotely? Oh, uh, what's that fucking vampire game on the Super Nintendo? Um, it was Super Famicom, uh, where you're a vampire. Willy Wombat. Oh fuck. Isometric view, and you're like a vampire, and you can go into a town and fucking do whatever. That sounds wonderful. It is wonderful. He's got a fan log. Yeah, I've got it on my, on my fucking flashcard over there. Fakenet, what's that called? Initializing Fakenet. Crisp is thinking of Dark Half, developed by Western Bit Entertainment and published for the Super Famicom in 1996. So we, we've got a spell, and it's called. Do you know what it's called? Have you tried it yet? I haven't cast a spell in this game. This is a perfect Eric spell. Okay, it's called Deadly Fingertips. Hell yeah. Elden and, Ring. And, yeah. And, yeah, good point. And, the, you know why this is a perfect Eric spell? Because it doesn't do anything that takes away MP. It's used forever. It doesn't consume resources. It has my name in it. Well, it, it's useless on bosses. Okay. It's an auto... What are you saying about me, Chris? Well, you want to save everything for the boss. Oh, I see. I was yeah. just saying I was useless at bosses. Yeah, gotcha. well, yeah, I mean, yeah. that might be true, too, but I don't know. It is a like a single one-hit kill. You can just take out any enemy. He he blings them away in existence. Remember when Ted did the the, the huge fucking yeah. dome spell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a very small version of that where it absorbs a single enemy into fucking hell, I guess. I think Kistis did that with Degenerator. Yeah, it's very similar, and it almost always works. So it's a good way to... You know, if you're fighting six guys and you're like, oh man, I wish there were only five guys and uh-huh. I want to take them out in one hit, Burgers there you fries, go. Right. Yeah. He's got four uses of, the, of that spell, so uh, four random bad guys can be killed. Or good guys. Whoever you want to kill, really. This game actually has a lot of Animals. spells that are useless on bosses that, that encourage you to use them in the in the other things. Your, your big nuclear spells, you can save those, but otherwise, you know, just keep moving forward. Fission technology. Anyway, I use my deadly fingertips on some new animals and, and things. Flying squirrels. Yeah? Did you fight some flying squirrels? Not at this juncture. Oh, well, I'm sure you did later. Yes. Uh, do you remember them? They wear yes. red, red capes and they put fucking buckets on your head. I'm not, yeah. Is that like a way to simulate blind? Is yeah. They relate this, that to the this, player. This game has like, like a, yeah. Suicoden has some kind of hilarious uh, uh, status effects. It's got that. It's got blind. And I'm not sure if it's this game or the next game, but there's one called Balloon where they put a balloon on your head where every time you take a turn, there's a random t- chance that you just may fucking float away. It's forever? <laughs> no, just till the battle's over. Okay. It's great. I always like those abstractions. Like, I believe in Final Fantasies, at least seven and eight, for Confuse, your character just does 360s. It's wonderful. Yeah. And yeah, in, in Final Fantasy VI, the blind effect, like, it literally had, like, ink on your guy's fucking face. It, it looked like he was wearing sunglasses, though. Anyway, what else do you do on the way to this next town? I fought some rocks, R O C. Oh, yeah. Those are some kind of uh, beefy enemies, aren't they, Eric? It's a bird with a blue forehead jewel and stone headgear. I remember Rock as a beast of legend from Shin Megami Tensei and also uh, Middle Eastern mythology. Yes, also true. I think a bird in Devil May Flock Off Featherface. Flock Off Featherface. I think that was a rock. It's possible. Yeah. Which Devil May Cry is this? The first one. Okay. Flock Off Featherface. Flock Off Featherface. And I've then, played three and five oh, in the remake. Sorry. Uh, Bayonetta also says Flock Off Featherface. Okay, good. Flock Off Featherface. So, Hot reference. Uh, anyway. Thank you, Kamiya. Yeah. Rock kills my whole party. I have to go do the whole gate sequence again. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, they're really strong. They're pretty hard. Too bad you didn't use deadly fingertips on the marriage. Sorry, didn't would've, know. Would have been would have been easy. I had south. Seek it as a bunch of rocks or stone buildings and shit in the middle of a dirt field. Oh yeah. no, poverty's back. What do you think its population is, Eric? Seventy five hundred. Nope, eleven hundred. Yes, Seika is located south of Quaba Fortress. Travelers heading to the land of Arliss usually rest in Seika before they go onward. Arliss, th- the HBO show? I guess. I think Arliss is the name of this province area that we're in right now. No, no, th- this province actually is called Gu- Gurin. 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 Anyway, that's it. Go ahead. New music, Eternal Flow yeah. plays. This Holy is- shit, what a powerful song. Yeah, this is a really, a really Excellent. good song. Excellent. This is like a major upgrade over Rock Rockland, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, yeah. Sika is more of a traditional Chinese village. Lots of green grass, gray dirt, and houses with gabled roofs. Yes, bamboo as well. Bamboo is present in our... Where is it? Still down here? It's yeah, behind... It's there. Yeah, it's Great. over there. Let's hit shit with it. It's, it's still got a little green in it, Eric. Outdoor... How long does bamboo last? Does that last forever? Uh, it lasts since the Terranigma podcast. Great. <laughs> NPCs wandering around town. There's a lady in pink. Says children grow up without their parents all the time. Chris, it's a war-torn country. Yeah. Then says, Master Matthew, Master Matthew all day, and never listens to me. I think this is more of a, a commentary on, like, your, my fucking kids won't listen to me. They just say Master Matthew all yeah, the time? Yeah, because they, you know. So we're in the right place. I guess so. Guy on the upper left. My hobby's fishing. 
And I often go to Kaku to fish. Yeah. It's southwest of here. So this man's telling you there's other cities across the border, Chris. Mm -hmm. Guy in the upper right by the elevated house with a stone wall. Victor asks this man if he knows where Matthew lives. The this guy has a portrait. His eyes are looking down. His long brown hair is pulled back and he appears to be wearing a red scarf. Neckerchief? Sure. He's credited as Matthew in his portrait. Yeah, they don't do the thing in this game where it says man yeah. until, they, until you, they identify, so... But Matthew tells us Matthew lives <laughs> up these steps, and it's one of those times where I can't tell if the localization is fucked us or if Soy Coden is being clever. Yeah. Why not both? So I believe him. Then I leave. Yeah. Do you want to go... Um, well, do you want to explore the town? I want to finish towns? exploring town. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, he's just an NPC outside I happen to talk to. Went yeah. to the inn next? Yeah, we've got some... Uh, an old friend is here. Yeah. Who's here? It's Marie. She's here. She, uh, Who's Marie? Marie is the innkeeper from Gregminster. Who hit us, right? Yes. And in fact, she was, she had to escape. She lost her job. Yeah. She harbored a fugitive, so she had to escape. And she, she doesn't blame us though. She just blames fate. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's all. That's it. Another person in here asks if we are a friend of that brat, Sheena. He's been so obnoxious lately. I'm sure Sheena's a character in this game, but I don't remember. Another guy in here says the Imperial forces attacked the Liberation Army's hideout, but Lady Odessa's safe. As long as she's alive, everything's okay. Chris, the plan's working. It is. They don't know if she's going to flow up in the river. Trust the process. And there's one more fella in here. His name is Antonio. Antonio. He is a cook. He says that his life is devoted to cooking, but he doesn't have his own restaurant yet. He wishes there was a place where he could be of use. Well, Eric, I wonder if there will one day be a place. We're going to open up our own series of, of fast food places like in Terranigma. That's true. Mc, uh, Mayor McCheese is back from hell. Yeah, he is. He's always back. He's been back for the whole time. I went to the magic shop next. You mean the rune master? Magic shop? You don't know shit about runes, Eric. Wandering guy in here has a crystal, but it's damaged. He's disappointed that he can't use magic now. Like yeah, this Chris is a, said yeah, earlier. I referenced that before because he's like, oh, he's, this is a fucking poor guy who can't, who can't uh, buy one. House in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. Lady in here by herself is O'Neill. Mm -hmm. She has a portrait and her hair is pulled back in a bun. Her hand is by her face and she looks five beers in. Yeah. She asks if we know that Odessa is missing. Chris, is she a secret member of our club or is she a secret narc? I th yeah, I don't remember, but I I'm thinking that she's our future like rumor monger and or spy master. Mm. Like, I, I know that there's a character... Master of Whispers. Yeah. I know there's a character in these games that always is like the, the NPC that hangs at your at your castle that you can speak to if you forget where you're supposed to go next. I think this might be it. But I guess we'll find out when we get there. Okay. Then I went to Matthew's house. We approach and Swicoden cuts to a different angle of the house, making it seem larger. My guy's house has two doors, which means it's extra fancy. Yeah. I, we walk inside and we, we discover that he is storing children in the back room. Hell Yeah. Uh, there's a blonde pigtails girls, two blue haired boys who could be Elliot from Knights. Yeah, there's a picture hanging on the wall that looks like perhaps it was Kanji before it was down downscaled into sprites. Uh, one kid complains that Matthew gives too much homework. I hate homework. The little girl says she has decided to marry Master Matthew. Uh oh. And the blue hair kid says that Matthew is out for a walk. But we can't tell anyone that she wants to marry Master Matthew. So no. this child is just trusting us with their deepest secrets. Yeah, don't do that. There's a poster in the back wall. Did you read it? Oh, I didn't know you could actually read it, no. It says, this week's motto is, let's take good care of mother and father. Oh, that's a good motto. So it's, you know, when you go to a daycare, you always see like, don't say shut up to your friends, yeah. you know, just stuff like that in the back. So it, it's going to get confusing later, but Matthew, in his capacity in this village, is a teacher. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Uh, he right. is, yes. His own Sid, yes. as you will. Mm -hmm. I get in Matthew's bed and stay there for a little bit in front of the children. Yeah. Then I leave. Yeah, then we have to go back outside and... Victor tells Uncle Matthew that he tried to fool us. Victor's pissed. Yeah. He's like, yes, I'm Matthew. What can I do for you? I, I thought he was going to say, like, well, you asked where Matthew lived, and I told you right there. Like, I thought that's what he was going to say, because we asked where Matthew, do you know Matthew, where he lives? And he pointed to it, and he didn't say, he, we, we never asked if he was him. I thought, right. he, I thought that was going to be the He's whole very gag. very literal. Yeah, but I thought that was going to be the gag, but he didn't mention it. Grimio immediately blows his load that Odessa is dead. Yes. We're here to honor Odessa's last request. She asked us to deliver this earring to you. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, we're going to cash in, get this dude. So Coden's not going to rock the boat. No, Chris. Matthew lingers on last request. And then I, I see she's dead. She was a fine young woman, but she got mixed up in that. Victor interrupts him. That yep. what? Yeah. Is Matthew one of those guys? A reluctant member of the resistance? Well, no, more along the lines of like, oh, he, yeah, she got mixed up. I don't, I don't, I don't mess with her. She's mixed up in all that. And like just somebody who doesn't. Fury Caraway? Yeah. Well, what's the word I'm looking for? 
I don't know. Like, dismissive of childish antics of your younger sibling? Well, well, he yes, he's dismissive of his younger sibling, but it's not because he thinks that she has childish antics. It's because he thinks that uh, no, she's risk. doing it for no reason. She's doing it and she's going to get herself in, in fucking killed. So it's more sensation seeking than actual noble cause. That's what he thinks. Okay. But I don't think that's actually true. But yeah, go ahead. I don't like the tone of your voice. What's wrong with what Odessa was doing? And then Matthew gives it to Victor straight. She was a fool. I knew it would come to this. I can't accept this earring. Please leave. Game over. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> the game's over. Sorry. Dude runs back into his house and we party up. This is not how I thought this was going to go, Chris. Yeah, and he's very short with this, and I'm not sure if that's a, a product of the of like dry writing or translation or if that's just ha- who this guy is. I follow this asshole back in his own house. Inside, he says he'll have nothing to do with Odessa, then asks us to leave again. I get in his bed in front of him. He does nothing. <laughs> Then we party out again, have another chat. Yep. Outside, I guess. Victor Outside. says, this guy makes him sick. This guy are sick. He is. He are sick and makes me sick. Cleo agrees, but wonders why Odessa had to see him. Music. Theme of tension, impact version plays. Who hustles up? Yes, it's some Imperials. Yeah. Er- Eric, I've been hearing about this invisible hand of destiny that I've heard so much about. Now, is this a moment of that? Because Matthew was just, he was content to have us fuck off. Mm-hmm until these events unfold and they just happen to unfold right when we leave if victor is victor is putting on a pretty big i can't believe this shit like falsetto at the moment and i think he may have slipped some imperial soldiers some money when we got in here to put to 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 rush this up because he could predict what happens oh okay so So victor this is destiny i think this could be attributed to victor's nefarious antics matthew's going to be a very important character in this game and one way or another he was going to see the evils of the empire I think. Perhaps. It's hard to say. Was he a man living in denial, Chris? I think he was. Anyway, it's Imperials. They tell us to get out of the way. They all pile in Matthew's house. Yep. So we move on, or we move up, and they go marching up the stairs. And we all wonder what is going on. We walk up to the house, and the music changes to theme of tension ensemble version. I got very confused about that, but yes. Maddie and all of his kids are out in the front yard. Maddie, I started hating writing Matthew, so I started calling him Maddie, by okay, the way, M A T T Y. That's going to fuck you, me, but okay. What are you doing? What do you plan to do with that child? One of the soldiers tells Matthew Silverberg that he is being ordered to return to duty in the Imperial Army. There's no reason a fine doctor like you should be wasting your talent in this pathetic village. I need to make a point here. Okay. Matthew is not a doctor, he's not, he's not a fucking doctor. But they call it, so is that a localization? Yeah, we're going to talk about it at the end of this conversation because there's a couple of instances of this, but... Do we know that he, they, Matthew is Odessa's brother yet? Do, I think we made reference to that without actually saying it. I don't remember. Earlier. No, she, she didn't say, I don't okay, think. Okay, so we yeah. don't... We, well, me and you know, but the, our characters don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. now we now we know because... Of, well, we know they're related because they, they use the word, the term, the, the name. Okay, Silver. so he's not a doctor. So let me uh, fan loc this edit right now. Yeah. There's no reason a fine motherfucker like you should be wasting your talent in this pathetic village. Yes. While you're the hero of the Battle of Kaleka. Maddie responds, I refuse. I've had it with war. Nowadays, I'm nothing but a poor recluse. Chris, a recluse hates all men and they're misanthropes that you don't teach children. Yeah. Yeah. Recluse is another example of a, of, of, of a poor, well, poor is not the right word. Questionable. Like, it's like this was translated out of context. Yeah. 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 The soldier tells him, we've been ordered by Lord Kasim Hazel to bring you with us by force if yeah. necessary. We met that guy in the consultation room. Yeah. He was the guy in the upper right, right? Yeah. Maddie says he has no intention of returning to the Imperial service. I'm trying to like reconscript him, Chris. Yeah. Does that mean like shit's going bad in the empire and they just like, they, they made, they hustled Teal up to a border. They're trying to reclaim this dude. Yeah. Like, are, are things going wrong? Like who are they fighting by yes, the way? The, the liberation the, force? No, they're fighting the city states of Jouston. Okay. In the Northern border. Uh, that's where, th- th- that was mentioned at the, at the, at the top of the game. Although. Oh, that's right. Joust, Joystone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the liberation army is not yet at the point to where they can like match the Scarlet Moon empire from a. Uh, a manpower perspective. The soldier calls his bluff, telling Matthew there's no telling what will happen to that child if he chooses to be so stubborn. Quote, say, maybe we'll send him to the Banar Mines. Pretty hard labor there. Who no. knows if the kid will survive? The kid screams no and asks for the doc's help. So they said doc again too. Yeah, yeah. And there, I think there was another... Is this doctor like Saiten's doctor? Like more or less like a sensei type thing it, as opposed it, yeah, to... Yeah, I think the word sensei is being used here. Without context, it's difficult to translate the word sen- sensei. Matthew demands they let go of the child. We party out. 
Gremio asks what we should do, and we get a choice. Help them, of course, or <laughs> wait, let's see what's happening. Oh, I, I, I'm going to help them, of course. I help Maddie out, too, to yes. show that I respect his decisions and let him know what I am that I'm good at murder in front of him. Yes, Victor is ready to beat ass. Yes. Cleo won't admit it, but she lives for this shit. Uh-huh. Even Gremio points this out. He's like, hey, Cleo, yeah, uh, you're... You're on one. I imagine Cleo like licking a knife at this point. Uh, no, an air sword. Okay. Excuse well, me. just still, but like <laughs> lick, touching a blade with a tongue, tonguing yes. a blade. We all rush up and Victor states that we're taking over this fight. The Imperial goon asks who we are. We get a choice. Yeah. Survivors of the rebel army or just good guys passing by. Would you pick? I pick good guys passing by. Me too. What's a rebel army? I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I've never Rank. heard of never heard of that such a thing. I'm not going to out myself just yet. The soldiers demand we be captured. Time for a battle. I demand that they take have a taste of my deadly fingertips, and I send one of them to hell, and then I kill the rest of them normally. I slaughter them, and I expect to be treated like a hero, like I've saved the children <laughs> yes. after this. But Soy Coden actually, I give it a bit. I, I didn't give it as much credit as I should because what happens? Yes, Matthew's response is, oh my God, all this killing and soul eating in front of children. I don't think he said soul eating. He didn't say soul eating. But, but I did still. do some soul eating. I sent one of the, oh my God, you sent a soldier to hell. Did you notice the typo here too? No. All of this killing in front of a children? Oh yeah, in front of our children. Yes, I, I love a children. So it's confirmed we're murdering these fuckers. Tilla's killing army men, just slaughtering them by the half dozen all the time. Yes, this confirms what you were thinking before about like, what are we yeah. doing to these soldiers? Like, what happens to the bodies? Is there like a pile? Do we burn them? Do they yeah. all get to the... Like, you're like, no, no, they go in the river. I've done this before. Yes, in the stream, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. uh, we get control and go back inside. Yeah, it fades to black, I assume with body cleanup, and then we come back up and we can go inside. Yep, and begin speaking with Matthew. I go in this man's house uninvited a third time to fuck with him again. <laughs> yeah, all the kids like, are gone. What's the... And there's some sort of fucking fable where you gotta visit three times? A Beetlejuice, yeah. <laughs> Best fable. <laughs> no, I don't mean say it three times, I mean visit three times. Oh, no, it's Roman Drive? No, fucking hell, it's the Romance of Three Kingdoms. Oh. Uh, thank you, I have Airwolf. Uh, yeah, uh, Master Juk Eliang, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but he must be visited three times before he agrees to join the the forces of of Lu Bei. And you know what Master Juge is, Eric? A fucking military strategist. Just like fucking here. It's gotta be a fucking reference, Eric. Do not pursue Beetlejuice. It's gotta be a reference, right? Eric's just fucking looking at me. He has no Three idea. wishes, Chris. No. Three visits. Wish for more visits. In my opinion, it's it's a it's a reference. Music. Touching theme plays. And Matthew speaks. He says, I know who you are, Tyr, son of General Tio Mictal. How do I know? I still keep in touch with a few friends in the Imperial Army. And Chris, this is like, what, the third guy in a row who's like, who the fuck are you? And then he's like, I know who you are. Yeah, and also he's keep he's still keeping in touch with his friends in the Imperial Army. Telegram, like, Chris. Bo both sides case Pigeons. plays. <laughs> like, come on, man. He finally admits that Odessa was his sister. Yeah. And Cleo's like, yo, why'd you say such bad things about your sister? Well, he confirms his sister because Grimio asked why the Imperials used his full name. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Cleo then asks Maddie why Maddie said such terrible things about Odessa, and Maddie replies in stunted text, I decided that I would never again be involved in war and killing, but not Odessa. She chose to fight for her beliefs. How did Odessa describe me? And Cleo's like, is some guy? Mm-hmm. Seiko. Also, is like the reluctant, like... Good person who's good at violence is that's a, a fairly common character you encounter yeah. in games like this matthew then turns his back to the party i see i guess she never forgave me odessa told me that a powerful man who doesn't use his power is a coward yes i am a coward i would rather be called a coward than have to bear seeing that awful sight again coward e coward cowards even if it meant being rejected by my own sister grimio asked about that awful sight line matthew explains Watching people die from my own actions, friend and enemy alike. But today, I have realized something. Even if I close my eyes, the world will not disappear. From now on, I will strive for what Odessa was striving for. One, using the same verb in the sentence twice is it, irritating. coward person. seven times, too. Yeah, yeah. And like, to me, this is something that if this game weren't an expedited track to gather 108 people in 22 hours, like yeah. we'd get an entire quest line from Matthew here. Yeah. But he had like a complete reversal come to God moment in like the last 30 seconds. Yeah. And and now that I'm, I keep thinking about the three visit thing, like that could have been more spread out. Yeah. And, and, and kind of been a nice little parallel and, and would have developed him a little more because I mean I don't know who has the most amount of dialogue in this game but I would I would put Matthew at the top he's up there yeah. I just I enjoy these children and 
band of thieves like just repeatedly harassing this guy <laughs> like knocking on the door over and over again it's like the swingers voicemail just over and over just alienating him but he signs up for it yeah Grimio asks if he'll accept the earring he's like you can keep it yeah we get a choice why or but odessa i said why yeah so did i he tells me that there is a map inscribed that shows the location of the liberation army's hideout whoever holds this earring is destined to lead the capital letters freedom fighters I think maybe that's, a, again, a, a... Freedom Fighters is like a terrorist stand, stand in most of the time. Rebels. Yeah, but I wonder if maybe whoever translated this line was not aware that they were calling it the Liberation Army. Mm. And they just... Dream yeah, Fighters. Yeah, they put... Because they it is capitalized. Yeah, yeah. Matthew says, I'm a talented military surgeon. but Doctor. hardly Yes, but, but hardly the type to lead the Liberation Army. Now, that, that was a... That line... So he is a doctor? No, that line was always really confusing to me. But the better... He dissects work, the battle? Yeah, I was like, that, that was kind of how what I thought. Like, I was like, maybe this is a real term, like military surgeon. He fucking, fit. he's like, he does it surgically. No, I think it's just a bad translation or, or a, a, trans, a translation made of the word sensei without proper context. And it should have been somewhere closer to like military strategist or uh, general or something of that nature. I don't think the word surgical was used as an adjective for like precision sport play until at least the mid aughts. Yeah, you're probably right about that. He goes on, he says, but you, Tyr, however, are a born leader. I'm sure Odessa realized that. That's why she wanted me to meet you five minutes ago. Please accept this earring and live at your destiny as the leader of the freedom fighters. The earring of destiny, Chris. Which, uh, yeah. And I think, again, like the usage of the term proper down freedom fighters makes me think that Liberation Army probably should have been a stand in there. What's funny, in the credits, only one person was credited with the entire localization. So you would think they would have some consistent, I mean, we don't actually know. But- yeah. First, you get to pick if you're going to accept the earring. Yeah. You pick, uh, I can't do it or I'll do it. I can't do it. It's no good. I tried to pick I can't do it to see what would happen. Did you? No, I'm all in. He's like, uh, take some time to think about it and come back uh, with your answer. Which he's basically saying, take some time to save the game, then come back and tell me you're ready to progress with the storyline okay, because that's how it works. I go back and I do it. Despite there being one member of the Liberation Army here, I choose to become the leader of the Liberation Army. Music eternal flow immediately plays. Yes. Uh, Matthew says, henceforth, I shall call you Master Tear. Victor's cool with this. Yeah. It's like Victor has... Uh, He's not a leading man. Victor has all of the uh, authority to appoint to, like, fucking, did anybody worry about Sanchez's opinion about this? He, he didn't express where, it. He just told us where shit was. Where is Sanchez and where is Flick and don't we need their sign off? We don't know if they're alive or dead yet. Because why would they not be in the conspiracy sewer? Yeah. Right. Would they have abandoned? Are they cowards, Chris? John Doe says, LOL, Flick's going to be so pissed. <laughs> so um, I think we'll get answers to this to, to this little uh, plot line that's emerging, but it, it is kind of uh, maybe a, a bit of a miss that they didn't even acknowledge the fact that like maybe this is not going to go over well with Flick and the rest. Uh, also, are they alive would be a yeah. question. To ask. We, we have no indication of that. Yeah. There's not really an escape route in the sewers. So, they just got a boat. Yep. Shit boat. Uh, Victor asks Grimio and Cleo what they will do. Yeah. Grimio goes where the young master goes, of course. You could have predicted that. Victor he, implies they won't be able to go back to the Empire if they do this. Yeah, and but Grimio is is sure that Master Teo will forgive them. So he's still got that rationalization built into the back of his brain as his like plan B. Yeah, doubt. Cleo has had enough of the Empire shit, so she's down for this. She's the like, corrupt Empire. Yeah, she's ready for this. As a military surgeon, Matthew offers his first piece of advice. To revive the Liberation Army, we must recruit volunteers. I like it. Surgeons revive, right? Yeah. People who are dissatisfied with the Empire, and to do so, we need a headquarters. And God damn it, there's a fucking headquarters in the lake to the west. An abandoned castle in the middle of Lake Torrin. According could, to Matthew, at least. Yes, it could withstand an attack from the Empire. So he's like, we should make our way for Kaku. He sa- he'll stay here and prepare for the move because he, Eric, is not a battle character and he has no battle sprite, so he's got to just stay here and pack his shit up. Unfortunate. And also, of course, to give the children a year's say, worth of homework. Doesn't he have kids or is he just a... T- yeah, he says he has to give them a year of homework. Like, he actually... That's just like... Uh, here, teach yourselves, kids. I'm going to win this war in a fucking year. Yeah. That's how good he is. Uh, so, uh, let's talk a little bit about the translation here with the word surgeon and stuff like that. Yeah. All this was translated in the, like, the before Honeywood timeline. Yes. The BH. Yeah. This game, like we said, was it was pretty likely translated from spreadsheets with no context for the narrative or when things were happening. It, people in the town will call Matthew Doc, but also refer to him as a teacher. 
When he refers to his former occupation, he calls himself the surgeon, which is way off base. So I think tactician was probably better there. I had a hunch about this, so I asked a friend of the show, Pat Holloman, who speaks a little Japanese and has worked in localization. Pat confirmed that my suspicions with the word sensei being used here were, were, were probably correct. Also, I think Tokame and the Real Net also confirmed that earlier in the chat. So uh, thanks, to, thanks to various folks for that. The word sensei, out of context, is extremely ambiguous. It's used for like doctor. It's used for like fucking master splinter. It could be used for a military strategist. I think the, literally it's, like, it's just like the one who came before. Um, so it's not necessarily um, an easy word to translate if you're fucking going through an Excel document. That's all. Thanks, Eric, for the, the, our discussion of before Richard Honeywood's timeline. BH. 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 Thanks, Richard. We party up. I leave town and am murdered by four rock birds once again. God damn it. Use your deadly fingertips. I ran into a rock as well, um, but... The rock, please. The, excuse, no, the rock's later. <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you run into a beast commander? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a... It's a human being. A wild lady with pink skin, uh, and she controls beasts. She can make all the beasts attack at once. Uh, she also has a kiss attack. That's, I guess it's supposed to like charm you. D -d did she do that to you? No, I did not make out with a beast commander. She did it to Grimio. I guess because Grimio. <laughs> I guess because Grimio was like the first party, first member of my party, like the, the, uh -huh, yeah. the very front lined up, and it never worked on him. So I'm assuming Poison Ivy Grimio's shit. gay. It's a possibility. Yeah. Well, or, I don't know. I mean, you can, not, yeah, you can get a non-consensual kiss and not be like that's enraptured true. by the charm. That's true. But in in rules of JRPGs, like you should be. Oh enraptured. yeah, yes. you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so or Grimio could just be sexless. I don't. That's true. Say. Kaku. Squirrel put a bucket on my head. Eternal flow plays. It does. NPCs. There's a guy in the middle of town who can't believe we're looking for Torin Castle. You've got to be kidding. There are monsters there. Uh-oh. This castle may be a little bit ratty, Chris. Yeah, we don't, we don't want that shit. Another old man knows Torin Castle as home of the fog monster and says only a fool would ever go there. There's a cat in this town, but it ran behind the item shop and won't come back out. Chris, it always runs and I always chase it. What a wonderful cat. Yeah, the cat's great. Just like my cat, Louise. Meg is here. She's a portrait character by the end. She's a little girl with green gloves. She says, who are you all? The Liberation Army? Uh-oh. Then you're fighting the Imperials. But no, I'm busy now. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you know him. His name's Jupo. He's my uncle. And he's a trickster. <laughs> How do you feel about the word trickster here? I like trickster. I do too. I really like the word trickster as kind of like a character class. Yeah. It's excellent. Uh, really good. Oh, by the way, there's no interesting facts about Kaku, except for uh, the population, Eric. What do you think? 1,100 with Seika. 650. 900. So, uh, there you go. You go to the armor store. I sell everybody's bl uh, brass armor and pick up plus seven guard robes. Yeah, guard robes are pretty good. I didn't buy all guard robes because I can't afford them because I'm not a cheater like you. Did not cheat. Oh, yeah. Didn't I use I'm not, I'm not a gamble. I'm not... Manipulator. I'm not a sinner. Gambling is a I sin. I didn't gamble shit, Chris. I knew it was going to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> why, why am I forgetting his name? Marco? The fucking guy from... Marco's got plenty of money, Chris. Back to the Future. Doc? Who gets the fucking... Biff. 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 Jesus, Biff Tannen. Thank you. Biff Tannen fucking getting the almanac and betting on, on the Cubs or whatever. House in the bottom left. It's empty. Down there, Doc part. There's a guy wandering around the wooden dock and he says, give me a break, will you? The one with enough guts to go there is a reckless tie ho So I think like there's some implications that you're wandering around asking these fuckers about how to get to this this tower. Yeah, I need to meet this reckless tie ho by the way. Me I really, too. I really wanna, I'm really excited about him. You have access to the bar by walking down there, then up, which seems like a dangerous location for the front door of a bar. That's <laughs> true. Did you go to the, the room master here? And buy something is important. I know you didn't. No, no, of course not. I bought a holy crystal. What's that do? Well, Eric, you is it Eris' materia? No. Yeah, this must be a weird localization because it's not doesn't cast holy magic. It allows you to fucking hold a button down and run faster. Oh, like in Star Ocean for me, right? Uh, yeah. That was my experience in Star Ocean. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So I bought one, and actually no, I, I did buy one, and I don't think I attached it until it, I uh, got some more characters. But uh, dashing, great. I love dashing. Does that affect the RNG with random battles? Or is there still the same frequency or is it just like a perception thing? I'm not sure about that, actually. It seems like it probably doesn't, but it's hard to say. Just you never know with like how jank the code was yeah. on some of these things. Yeah. Like if it's by step or if it's by... Yeah. 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 Like, so go in the bar? 
Let's go to the bar. There's a guy in here. It's one big room with concrete floor and two tables. The bartender and one patron are generic dudes, whereas the person in the top left looks like a 1998 32-bit Shion Uzuki and will definitely have a portrait. Yep, and guess what? He does. Talking about Sergey? Yes. Shit the generic dude does. Yep. It's Sergey. He's in the thinking pose with his back to the camera. Yep. He says, listen to me. I happen to be an investor. No. Nope. Listen to me. He's not an investor. I happen to be an inventor. <laughs> yeah. After much hard work, I came up with an amazing invention. Something that would impress even the dwarves. But none of the castle keepers understand what a wonderful invention it is. And Chris, he says, what is it you ask? And this made me laugh out loud. <laughs> this response. What did Sir, Sergey? What did Sergey invent? It's an elevator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you got to have that experience of like finding out what that what that in- instrument is. And I was like, is it an ice spear? Are we going to like get all the element spears? No. no, he's invented an elevator. Yeah, you're going to want that shit later. I talked to an anime lady and the music stops. This is Camille. Yeah, she's fierce looking. Pink hair, very tiny mouth and eyes are tragically misaligned. Mm-hmm. She says, Tai Ho. Oh, that guy, you? I've got you now, you bum. Camille then moves up and pushes Grimio back as new music theme of perversion <laughs> plays why was it for you i didn't i just wrote weird music and i forgot to look it up i think it's probably the same though initializing fake net. it is also known as strange theme grimio is taken aback wondering what she has done but camille can believe this shit she loves it what have you done ha, i've got you now quote all collect from your grave and quote is the debt collector's motto and you'll never outrun camille the she devil Victor wonders what all of this is about. I think Victor, Victor feels threatened by a scoundrel title because she's like really one-upping him here. Yeah, she is. Suggesting Camille might be Grimio's friend. Cleo also wonders no idea what's happening. Camille then, is it Camille or Camille? Camille then screams at Grimio to give her the money he owes her in cash. I've been looking for you for two months. Then Cam- the Camille sprite continues to push Grimio sprite backwards. Yeah, and Grimio's vibrating the whole time. So yeah, Grimio's getting pretty upset. Cleo sincerely asks Grimio if he is in debt. Grimio replies as only Grimio could with goodness. Of course not. Like while being like hustle pushed back by a young sprite. Right? Yeah, it's great. Camille gets hopping mad, suggesting Grimio is lying. Camille then says she has proof. Camille produces a bill for the banquet with Master Tio. Quote, I also owe something at the end. Grimio is surprised he has to pay for this. If you talk to the the item shopkeeper in Gregminster, when you don't have Grimio in your party, he will uh, make a note, and it's after the banquet, he'll make a note about how Grimio, he'll send the Grimio the bill later. Yeah. So this is paying off for that, and it's actually a story moment. It's pretty great. That's. I'm glad the game is connecting threads that far apart. It's also funny that this is not like a, a, a case of mistaken identity. Like, Grimio no, yeah. literally uh, uh, like owes some shit. Like, so Coden is constantly surprising me, because I'm. it's not as old as I think it is, and it's not as tropey as I believe it is, because it's like, it's just, it's doing shit like this that just defies my expectations. Mm-hmm. Victor finally steps in on this one, and then appears to examine the bill. Victor jumps and spits out 10 exclamation marks. He then starts stuttering. Listen, we're in a spot of trouble at the moment, and we're short of cash. Victor then notes Camille's association with Tai Ho. And I want to be like, I'm not I'm not short of cash. I got like, I got like a million bits. Yeah. How much do I owe you? It doesn't let me say these things. She confirms, uh, Camille confirms she knows Tai Ho, and Victor asks where he is. Camille is like, hell yeah, buddy, I'll tell you after all this business. Victor then gives it to Camille straight. How about this then? We have no money at the moment. But once we find Tai Ho, we might have a way of getting some. I forgot that I am rich at this point and so did everyone else. Yeah, of course. Victor says he'll pay Camille back as soon as we get some money. Chris, do you believe Victor has any intention to do this? Absolutely not. No. He's 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 fast talking. He's a dining dasher after all. Camille thinks about it, but then concludes we're trying to trick her. Then says, damn these penniless bums. Camille accepts her fate, but says she's going to stick with us until we pay up. Camille joins the party. Victor's like, all right, shit, cool. Where's Tai Ho? Camille said, uh, he's downstairs. Yeah. That's all you had to do. Yep. That's it. Ready to go down there? Cleo calls Camille an odd one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Have you noticed in battle that uh, occasionally, like, if Tyr is low health and he gets attacked, he will be covered by Gremio or Cleo? No. Uh, Like... Like they have cover materia? Yeah, exactly, and I, I I haven't confirmed this yet, but it appears that there are cer- if there there are certain configurations of characters that will that will protect each other in battle, 
And it is, if this is true, it is absolutely hilarious because Camille will cover Gremio because he fucking the owes dead. her money. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Keep, that, keep, the, keep your man alive. I, I don't know if that's just something that happened, that, like that was just happenstance that I, that I noticed that or if that's actually the case, but uh, I'll dig into it. I wonder how, how like complex the, pro, like if they could just copy and paste the programming on that from one character to another based on that. Like yeah. if the code's already written for one character, if it's easy to just transfer to a different Yeah. One. I mean, they've also got to account for like character combinations and parties for United Tax as well. Yeah. Which we haven't really experimented that much with because we don't have any except for Pawn and Grimio and, you know, Pawn's a fucking cop. So, cop attack. It took me a while to find the stairs, but I do. Down here is one guy in a gray robe and a fucking mess of a man in a blue robe. Did you think that the, uh, uh well, yeah, we, we talked to the, did you talk to brown robe first? One table, three chairs. Uh, no, I talked to blue robe first. Okay, go ahead. Blue robe is someone named Yom Koo. Mm -hmm. Has blonde hair swept over his closed eyes. Looks like a surfer dude. Says, what is it? What do you want with my boss? A boat to Torin? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. He's a moody guy. Mm -hmm. The guy in the gray robe is Tai Ho. Yeah, he looks like he's got a beard, or he does have a beard, and he looks like he's got a crown of thorns, but it's actually one of those like rope hats. Yeah, it's like a rope crown and a beard from 2003. So future. <laughs> It's true. It says, what? A boat to Torin Castle? You must be nuts. That place is full of monsters. I'll be placing my life on the line to take you there. What? Oh, okay. It was... Yeah. That sentence could be read like he was volunteering. Taiho resolved to take us if we make an equally risky bet. Quote, you're going to have to bet all the money you have. Not true. Are you up to it? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was worried. I didn't have to go rip off Marco again. No, you can't get back to... I don't know if you can go back through That's Koala. Right. Yeah. yeah, I probably can't. You can pick yes or I don't think so. I say yes. Fuck it, Chris. I, I live. Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to say anything because they're like, you need to bring a thousand bits. You're you don't even have a thousand they bits. They called me penniless. Yeah, because I, I, I bought a holy crystal so I can Dude. fucking dash and I put it on Camille. Uh -huh. no, so Aren't can, you sad you bought something? What if you, you need that money right now and save well, to go it, kill some legendary myths At least birds. I can run out of town very quickly. It, <laughs> it does help tra traversing through town when there's no encounters. Uh, you're probably going to want that later too for traversing the castle. So anyway, yeah, then I, I did it. I, I got some money and I came back. He then says, here, I say, yeah, fuck it. He says, here we go then. Too late for regrets. We're presented with a goddamn cup as music. Theme of perversion starts over. It's dice. We're going to throw dice in this cup and the bigger number will win, but it's not that simple. No. Some shit about lucky numbers, throwing two at a time. One, two, three combination, being unlucky. Three same numbers is called a storm. If you get three ones, you have to pay triple. What are all these rules, Chris? It's great. I mean, the, the, the simplest way to put it is that you, if you, when you throw three dice if two of them match then the non-matching dice is your score uh, four five six you win extra money uh one two three is very unlucky two ones is very bad and three same numbers is called a storm it's very good okay, three ones if, is unlucky eric it's if, all eventually i started mashing through all these rules and do you know why because you have infinite money the infinite hand excuse me the invisible hand of destiny is going to guide me to victory on my first attempt oh it did of course i don't think it was the invisible hand of destiny because i did not have the invisible hand of destiny i lost all my money had to go back into town fight some more monsters come back lose again go back at chris yep don't you have save states yeah, I eventually did that. Okay. Um, but I, I, I thought this game was um, was rigged for... for like after two or three tries, you win no matter what? And I didn't, so... Uh, but I lost... Is it, even using the save states, I lost like six or seven times. Is and, there and placement was, like with the dice? You can like hit them in different yeah, areas? Yeah, because if you hit like too far on the edge of the cup, one of the dice... flies out. Yeah, and then you automatically lose. And I did that once too, so... Whenever I think of the suit coded mini games, I think of this game. Uh, it's in the second one as well. It's, it's, a, it's a good way to get money. It doesn't money. appear to be as, a good way. It's a better way than ripping off Marco. Oh, no, I didn't really know about ripping off Marco until, you know, this this this. Podcast. So you rip off Tai Ho is what you do? No, I just play Tai Ho. And, okay, and so you said it was a good way to get money, so you, you're gambling with Tai Ho? Is that, what I'm, is that how you've made money in this game in the past, Chris? You just take a poor man's dice game and rig it Tai Ho, your, yeah, yeah. Use Destiny to win your game, Chris? I guess so, yeah. You do that? Mm -hmm. We're the same, you and I. I got memory cards. Anyway, we finally fucking win. Then Tai Ho tells Yamku to prep the boat. Yamku says, sure, sure. Here we go again with Big Brother's Madness. I've never figured out if they are actually actually siblings or if that's like an Anike situation. Yeah. It's hard to say. Also, I, th I thought it interesting that uh, Taiho said, you're lucky today. I tend to go along with lucky folk. Lucky could be a different synonym for destiny to me. Oh, oh yeah. You're really trying to push it here, aren't yes, you? Yes, you're very much destiny I folk. lost like seven times, so no. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not accepting it. There has to be an agreement to play the sound. I'm not playing the fucking sound, Eric. Taiho says they'll be waiting for us at the docks. Yeah, let's go find them on the docks now. I talked to them. They said they're ready to sail. We all walk into the weirdly proportioned boat. New yeah. music. Oh, wait, don't forget, though. 
Taiho doesn't come preloaded with any shit, so he kind of sucks. So you, you can go back and upgrade his stuff if you want. But Sharpen Taiho up? Yeah. He, fi- he fights with the fucking harpoon. It's great. Of course. He's our dragoon, I guess. No, he's our fisherman. <laughs> he's our uh, Korcha. Yeah. New music plays. Blue Ocean, Blue Skies is retreated to a 32-bit cut scene of a boat traveling across a wide body of water. This is all I wanted for Star Ocean. <laughs> That's it? No, just remember how Star Ocean had no transition scenes? Oh, yeah. And, like, this is all I, I, I could have oh, right. dreamed with, with of this and from going from one place to the other, just to have fudge. some, yeah. It stops on a bitmap of a dilapidated white tower, almost like a lighthouse. Transition, Torin Castle. Music, waves hitting the beach. There's a white filter at 30% opacity over the screen, simulating fog. Yes, and also a huge fucking rock is in the middle of a lake, like they said it would be. Also... As we get there and party out, there is a huge fucking rock in front of the main entrance of this place. Accurate. Cleo says this is truly a haunted house. Camille expresses doubt, asking if Tyr is sure there's... Why did she come? If sure there's treasure here. Grimio doesn't know where Victor said it was. Is Victor not here? Like, why doesn't Victor... I don't know. Taiho and Yamku roll up, with Taiho speaking first. Wow, what a place. It must be full of monsters. I'll get him. He's, he's into this, Chris. Yeah, he's in for this shit, so he joins the party. Yamku is startled that Taiho is joining us and asks him to be careful. Tai, I just wrote Ho. Uh, Taiho replies that he wouldn't miss this for anything, and then joins the party. We can speak to Yamku if you want to return to Kaku. Chris, there's a chest right outside the entry door. You know what's in it? A mega medicine? Hell yeah, what's that yeah. do? It's, it's medicine that's mega? That's right. <laughs> Heals higher, more points, I guess? I walk into the nearby cave. Music, pen... Pimpe, 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 plays with its pimpe, thunderous pimpe, pimpe, bass pimpe. intro hit. Yep. Launches us into our, our journey. I fight three unique enemies in these caves, Chris. Yeah, some giant slugs, which Sna- are snails. They're snails, but emerald green shells and purple snail boy bodies. Yeah, just like from Mount Tiger Wolf. I fight some ghost armor. Yeah, well, ghost armor is Eric. It's, it's ghost armor. It's the main character of Moon, remix RPG. Okay, I thought it just looked like floating armor, but okay. It's a suit's armor without legs, helmet over face, holding a sword, and multiple pieces of the suit and sword fly off to hit you. Yeah, it's like pretty... remote arms. Yeah, the, the enemies are a lot better than I remember. There's some pretty, pretty yeah. interesting stuff. And what's the final one? I'm not going to pronounce the name. You do it. Oh, Alanis? Okay, Alanis Morissette. They're oh. green lizard birds with big head skull things with blue tails and hands with pitchforks. I got fish head guys, but okay. 1996 Taco Bell aesthetic come to life. Yeah, it's true. Uh, fa- Sobe drain a lizard. What? Uh, found some toe shoes. Yes. Don't yes. sell those. Don't don't sell those. I'm sure you can get another pair, but don't sell those. What if I have equipment that's better than those and I decided I didn't need them? You need them. Hmm. You have to have them. We'll see, Chris. If you want to collect the 108 Stars of Destiny, you have to have them. Well, someone should have made note of that in the guide. I, I'm pretty sure you can get another pair. The Chris so. guide. Yeah. Eventually, I make it outside in some sand. There's a big empty room inside of a stone wall out here. There's also a set of stairs leading down as well as what looks like a castle wall on the outside. Yeah. So I go on those stairs, which swings around to a series of hallways. I think I'm in the castle now, instead of the outside of the castle, or a set of caves below the castle. The cave is the castle. Castle cave, so it's like built into the side of the thing? Yeah. Cool. I enter more barren rooms and go through more identical looking doors. I make it to yet another cave, which Chris tells me is also a castle. Yes. So a code in auto walks my party to the left, and I can see the snout and front paws of a dragon gazing over the edge of a castle cliff. Yeah. Boss incoming. Victor says, looks like this one's the boss, and I love this localization so much. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this boss looks like the boss, guys. Chris, when did you start calling Level King's boss? And how insane does that sound in the context of the American workspace? That's a really good point. And I, you must kill your boss. I think... Allegedly parody, hypothetically. In Minecraft. Uh, in Elden Ring. In Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I feel like I, I had the terminology for boss really early on. Yeah, it was pre-K for me, at least. Yeah. And I don't remember what game it was. I'm thinking maybe Ninja Gaiden, but it really could have just been Mario. Yeah. Like, Koopa was the boss. Yeah. The camera pans up to reveal a dragon, olive green and sickly looking, with a little spaghetti nubs for wings. Mm-hmm. We get into a fight as music ultimate enemy plays so we can fight, quote, zombie dragon. Yes. I'm, I, I may correct myself later in the podcast, but I'm pretty sure this is the hardest battle in the game. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I had a pretty tough time with it. The dragon in battle, its outline is glowing orange. The thing snarls and shoots blue fire over the entire party. Cleo is dead instantly and auto-teleported to the back of the party, which I thought was neat. Why do you have Cleo in the front? I don't know. Cleo's a long-range character. She's got low defense. You need to have her in the back. Blame Taiho, man. Taiho can fight in the back. 
Well, that's not where he put himself. Put Taiho and Cleo in the back. These things would be helpful if Cleo wasn't already dead in the current timeline. Its other attack is to lurch forward and bite somebody for 80 damage. Why won't this thing die? I keep shooting it. I'm using all of my medicine. Everybody's using medicine. Oh my god, I've almost used all my medicine. Can I resurrect Cleo? Will any of this shit resurrect Cleo? Oh my god. Why won't this thing die? Somehow I killed it with all my apes almost gone on my characters on their last legs. What? I don't know how you killed this thing without magic. I win. I had Cleo with the fire in the back doing flaming arrows. And by, by this point, I think she's got the third fire attack by now because Cleo has a high magic stat. You should keep her in the back row because she has, she's very good. It took an absurdly, like every time I attacked for like five turns in a row, I was like, this is going to be it. This is going to be the attack that kills the dragon because yeah. this game is not that hard. This can't, I mean, my thing is to generally not start learning things until it starts pushing too hard on me. And yeah. I almost had to learn something here. Yeah. But, I didn't. I won. If you had uh, the clone rune on Victor, you could have used the clone rune attack. Which Why is, was that too? It's just a strong physical attack where he like dashes forward and then he is incapacitated for one turn, but it nets out the positive because in the turn that he is incapacitated, he can still defend. So he'll he'll net more damage and, and maybe win win the battle in, in one extra in one turn earlier. The damage rates here were pretty variable. Like sometimes it would be a lot, and sometimes it wouldn't be much at all. And I was wondering if I was critting something or if that's just like a random stat based. The game indicates a critical hit when it zooms in. Okay, I wonder what the effect of that was. Because sometimes yeah. it zooms way out too, like way yeah, out. That's the just I think that's just like cinematic. I think that's a flourish, especially when there are multiple characters ta attacking at the same time. Cinematic RPG. Maybe not the cinematic RPG, but it does have a very cinematic battle system. Victory. Camille delivers an excellent one-liner. That's what you get for acting big even when you're dead. Yeah, I think that's a great line, and I hope that's, like, on purpose. Yeah. That is a vi like that is something that Camille would say. Yeah, it's accurate. We've known her for 10 minutes, but she's already great. Gremio notices the fog is lifted. Then Soikoden plays the title screen music. Mm -hmm. Beginning theme. Cleo, who was dead, notes that this dragon was the one creating the fog. Victor then says the castle is ours, suggesting we give it a name. And I type capital letters, please let me name it. I think it's interesting because the introductory screen music is playing. Yeah. And it's not playing because that's a the mat that's that's the one of the main main themes of this game. It's playing because we're about to actually enter a name. Oh, because I, I, I think, see. That's the same. I think in the same in the Sweet Code and Two soundtrack, this game this song is just called Name Entry. Cool. So that's what I've always thought of it as. Tai Ho wants to name it Dragon Castle, and I want Tai Ho to shut up. Yeah. Camille wants to name it White Castle, which raises several questions, none of them good. <laughs> yes. Camille wants to call it Tear Castle. Oh my God. Cleo, the only reasonable person here, asks me what I want to call it. Yeah. And what's, Chris, you, what's the canon name? I think the canon is just Torin Castle. Okay. Because that's what I called it, but I didn't bother you, looking at it. You up. called it Torin Castle? Yeah. I, okay. So what I actually called it is Puerile and very 13 year old me, and I regret it. But I, the name I didn't choose that came to me after I already called it what I called it was much better, and I wish I had a time. I wish what I wanted to call it in retrospect was Grimiolo. 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 Grimiolo Castle. Yeah, but I didn't. I called it all capital letters. Fuck house. <laughs> F U C K H A U S. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. It, it, I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm 13. Yeah. Grimio says it's a good name, and Victor congratulates Grimio for some reason. <laughs> Fade out. Fuck house. Fuck house castle. You want to do the next scene? Or stop? Stop. Stop. Yeah. Stop it. Stop gotta, doing this. We got to end it on fuck house. All right. We'll end it on fuck house. Let's consult the real net. Initializing real net. Uh, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. I was thinking about Soy Code in 2, and I know it imports save data. Is it going to, is, is it called fuck house in Soy Code in 2 now? I probably. Okay. There's a couple of things that carry over. Um, and a couple of names that carry over. Well, the only names that you... But there's actually a fucking bug that makes the names... One of the no, names not carry over properly. I've been waiting to tweet a good fuckhouse show, but I didn't want to reveal the name of it um, at the current juncture. John Doe says, it was weird that Odessa gave the earring to Tyr instead of like uh, Victor. I guess she knows. Victor would like pawn it instantly. Yeah. yeah. Quick cash. Yeah, she... Eric Von Eyen points this out. Like, Ma Matthew would then think Victor was the leader, and then he'd be like, then he definitely would not trust Yeah, would Odessa. not trust his sister at all, yeah. putting that dipshit in charge. Does Victor be a character anymore after this, or is he done? No, Victor's not done. Okay. There's a lot more with Victor, Eric. Oh, man, Victor. 
Eric Von Ahn says that Matthew is definitely gaslighting the party. Oh, absolutely. He does, yeah. There, there at first, he does, for sure. Yeah, John Doe, I think, maybe summarizes what I was trying to say about Matthew, about being one of those guys. He thinks that Antifa is taking it too far. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like one of those guys. I couldn't quite get it out. That's a good way to articulate it. <laughs> Eric Von Ahn says, Matthew is the doctor of kicking your ass. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned this before, but uh, Tokame says, yes, I'm pretty sure that they use sensei for Matthew as a, as a respectful term, like the general respectful term that is used for teachers, doctors, etc. Is sensei deployed on anyone that doesn't have like an eight-year degree? Uh, I don't think Master Splinter went to college. This is true. Um, I, no, I, I think it... I think it I, do it, you know Master Splinter didn't go to college? Uh, it depends on what continuity, and some continuity <laughs> he was only a rat, and some continuity he was a human, so... Take it for what it's worth. In one continuity, he's reincarnated. Uh, Eric Von Ein says, uh, Grimio has only non-sexual life partner eyes for Tyr. That's, that's oh, yeah. I don't, I don't see any sexual... I, Grimio reads is completely asexual. To me. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, Eric Von Ein's got a lot of bangers tonight. The Liberation Army, deserters, true, believer, true believers, thieves, mercenaries, and debt collectors. I mean, you we are, to, we are scoundrels, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, you need to, well, I, the yeah. debt collector is probably a bridge too far for my personal squad, but like, it takes all kinds. Shy Guy 32 says, Big Brother's Space Madness. When Yamku talks about his uh, brother's madness. Yeah. I, I don't know the answer to this question, but I'm going to read it nonetheless. Dubert says, I remember the second, in the second one, I think so good too, that if you get three ones in the little dice game, it's called a piss. A piss? A piss. Yeah. A piss, P-I-S-S? Yeah. Did they change that or is it different than the first one? I think it is in the second one. I, I'm starting to remember it's called a piss. If there were piss, I, I would have I noted the piss. Yeah, yeah it, de- was... it definitely wasn't in the first one, so we'll see. Okay, so uh, Dubert looked it up. Dubert answered Dubert's own question. Uh, it is a name change in Silicon 2 where piss refers to when the dice fall out of the bowl. Mm. <laughs> How great. Yeah, my piss doesn't always make it in the bowl all the time either. Yep. John Doe says, Eric, you gotta learn magic, dude. Prove it. I'm surprised that you beat the boss with that magic because uh, Cleo is, is, does like 300 damage per hit with that fucking shit. One and done, son. No yeah. problem with me. No, I didn't even need Cleo. The only thing that kills I, me is the rock. I got killed. Mosquitoes and rock has killed me. Those are my, those are my deaths so far. How'd you spell fuckhouse, by the way? I, I, I explained. F-U-C-K-H-A-U-S. H-A-U-S. Okay, I, yeah. didn't, I, I didn't catch that. Okay. Because people were asking about the eight character limit. Okay, there we go. Um... John Doe says Victor is the best. This game has such a good cast. Yeah, I can't. F- oh my god! Sorry, I'm I'm hyping Victor's ship too much, but it's still going to exceed your expectation. Of all the people in our 108 stars of destiny, once deodorant is discovered, do you think Victor is last to try it out? I, pff, Taiho's pretty dirty. Yeah. Uh, like I haven't seen anybody with like a really threatening mustache yet, and that's like a, a major thing to me where I instantly perceive like lack of uh, hygiene skills. Yeah. That's true. By the way, a, a tip for this game so you can get the best ending, don't execute anybody, please. I think it's too late, Chris. Have you really executed somebody? Yeah. Who? I think he... Is, he's not a star of destiny, is he? I don't know. <laughs> what are you asking me for, man? I don't remember. Sokame says you can execute... Don't execute anybody else, Eric. Well, it worked the first time. Who's to say it won't work the second well, time, you Chris? Can still, you can still have a, a relative... control my destiny. You can still really have a, a, a nice ending, but you definitely don't want to execute everybody because some of those people might be stars of destiny. If you want to have 108 stars of destiny, then uh, make sure that you uh, don't do that. Human got achievements? I'm not saying it. It's just the ending is different and also the things that you unlock in Soy Code 2 is different. Wouldn't it be better if we had diversion experiences, Chris? Not in this case because the experiences of having 108 stars of destiny are so good, but I mean, I, I, I guess. Okay, I mean, so then you take the L since you've had them before. You execute no, everyone. All have the good no, ending so I, I can I, learn I, how to play it well. Have you ever played it bad? Yes. The first several times I played, I played okay. it bad because I didn't really use a guide. I can't not have what happens when you have 108 stars of destiny not happen. It, I just can't, I, I can't live my life like All right, that. We'll see what happens. John Doe says, Death to Tyrants. I, I agree in, in, in many of these execution cases, but. Didn't Tim McVeigh have a shirt on that said Death to Tyrants when he was arrested? Fucking shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Eric, for the real net tonight? No. Okay. Well, uh, uh, thank oh, you. Uh, just to just thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Real Net, for joining us tonight. This episode was the production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on March 2nd, 2022. Thank you, Mark, Shepherd. for the music. You're welcome, Chris. If you like this podcast, please support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash retro AM. We've got bonus episodes, mini series, vote for the next series. 
Do you like what we're doing? Do you like listening to this? We've also done this for Star Ocean, Parasite Eve, and Terra Enigma. Yes, in that order, but reversed. Uh, so yeah, check those series out if you played those games or play those games along with us. They're good. Those series are all, were all really fun. Uh, email us at podcast at retrogradeamnesia.com. Eric, until next time. Yes, we will start on our own destiny as we attack and dethrone God. And now you may go back to Bath. You fat rolling? No, not fat. I'm medium rolling. Okay. I can't deal with fat rolling. No. I didn't know that fat rolling was a thing when I played. Um, I can't remember if it was Dark Souls or Demon Souls, but I was like, why do I suck all of a sudden? Why fat am I no rolling. good at this game? I'm fat yeah. rolling. I was secretly worried about that, that you would give up on Death Stranding. No, I actually, I made it to a very nice stopping point so that I would want to, so I, I beat the first like major world boss or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I stopped. Good. But who knows, Eric, something else might come out. Don't give up on the dream. We're also joined by the fake net, our post-production AI companion and secret unlockable character. Person. Uh, fucking summon, summoning, summoning salt application. Some other guy is out here. Nope. I already read that. Okay. That's what you get for acting bid. But I can always be proud of you. My cherished conception. My glorious vision. My... Chang, I'll give you one chance to help me. Then I'm coming up there. Oh, you won't be able to do that. Oh yeah? I guess we'll see about that. Hungry, my baby? 